Good morning guys and gals, Froggy here. It is January 2019 and I've got some European Formula Mobile One 040 and a Mobile One filter and some of those magnetic uh, oil draining plugs. So let's uh, change the oil on this beast. I'm going to show you how. LS7 motor. I'm going to drive it now and warm it up. Here's the oil pressure at idle. I just started it up. So 50, 60, 70, about 68 PSI at idle. And uh, we'll compare that against uh, what we get with the new oil. I am assuming this has got factory fill 5W30 because uh, I bought the car used and I do not have service records. Uh, I got it with about 8,000 miles on it. So, not sure what the oil was. Okay, we're at 190 F, so that's plenty warm to get a good drain. Um, these engines can run hot up to over 220, 230 if you're running it real hard. Uh, and you can see the idle pressure now that the oil is warmed up is a little under 30. Yeah, so. That's fine. I'm going to jack it up and make sure it's level and proceed. I'm going to see if I can bring this back to life. Damn. Batteries, Duracell batteries, yeah. Wonderful batteries. All right, well, a little sidetrack there. It's always something, isn't it? I use this and a screwdriver and a pick and some scrubby to clean off the terminals. And then I'm going to put some of this battery terminal protector. I already tested it. It works now. Uh, no thanks to crappy Duracell batteries that leaked all over my electronic level. Don't buy Duracell. I'm putting in Kirkland. I know Kirkland doesn't make their own batteries, so for all I know, these are made by Duracell. But what are you going to do? Everything gets buried under layers and layers of re rebranding, basically. What I'm going to do instead of spraying, well, I might spray a little bit in there, but I'm going to spray like on the ends of these batteries. Spray the protector. I think it's red or green or something. There you go. It's red. Uh, it's not quite as bad as what I thought it was. I'm still going to spray a little in the compartment. Okay, so it's within less than one degree of being dead level, so most garages you go into won't even have their lift leveled that well. So I'm going to call it good, get my pan, and drain the oil. Okay, going under with my bucket, my light, 13 millimeter socket, I think that's right, and my favorite oil filter pliers which gets pretty much every oil filter off i do like those i'll put some links for some of these uh, tools that i use in the description this is the oil reservoir here on a dry sump system uh i can't show you too much more of it but it's like a tank basically pull this up and take the cap off right there so that you don't draw a vacuum and do not touch this. This used to be where you would put oil in all the other previous LS motors, but you don't touch this. Okay? So, uh, I studied uh, the underside a little bit. I didn't film it yet. I will. And I am going to put the nose down a couple of degrees uh, so that I get a better drain of the dry sump area of the pan. I don't know if you even call it a pan anymore. It's just like a plate. Uh, but a couple of degrees nose down, I think, would be a good thing. Okay, this is going to be a little weird. I'm laying on my back. Excuse my hand. But I want to show you how I did it. And the camera's pointed towards the front of the car. So I loosened up both of the drain plugs, and I loosened up the uh, filter. I didn't punch a hole in the filter. Some people do that. Fine, if you want to do that. I just thought it would make more of a mess. So I can get all three of them dripping into my one pan at the same time by carefully 
uh, moving the pan around, and also it has to do with the size of the opening on the pan. Um, so they're all dripping now. I haven't pulled the filter off yet. Um, but I will pull that off and probably just let it drop into the pan after it's dripped a, a few more drips. But that's what I did. Loosened them all, and I'm laying on my back. I, I slid underneath the car, and then I did the front one, the side one, and then the filter. Okay? A couple of things to get you caught up. I am going to send an oil sample to Blackstone, uh, their laboratory, who will tell you what kind of uh, what condition your oil is in, if there are any wear uh, particulates of any certain uh, metals that will tell you something about how your engine is, uh, the, the life of your engine. And also, um, these uh, oil drain plugs and the filter, but mostly the drain plugs, they were really on there tight. I had to use my, uh, my torque wrench as a breaker bar to get them off so holy cow they're only supposed to be about 18 foot pounds so I don't know sometimes you get some gorilla guy who doesn't know what he's doing or doesn't know his own strength and he puts them on too tight but anyway I will torque them on properly when I put the new ones in all right froggy had a little lunch so that's been draining for about uh, 40 minutes or so uh, what I'm gonna do is fill up this new filter with oil. Uh, I never used to bother with the o other Corvettes that I've had, but this is a dry sump system, and I'm really not that much of an expert on dry sump sim systems. So I figure uh, anything that'll get the oil pressure up real quick, like then uh, I'll do it. So that people say fill the oil filter, so I will. And then I'll put the two new plugs in that have magnets on them. Like that. I always, I have always used those. I like to get little minute particles of uh, iron, uh, and usually there is, and it's like it's finer than dust. Even it's just like nothing. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong, uh, but why have them circulating through your uh, your car engine if you can catch them on a magnet? So we put two of those in and uh, fill her up, start her up. Okay. You can see that the uh, black rubber gasket is a little flattened out on these uh, original ones, and it, it's a little nicer on the new ones. These are 13 millimeter, these are 15, that doesn't really matter um, as long as the thread is correct. Uh, so, just thought I'd show you that. I'm not going to uh, cut these apart or anything, but I do want to show you there are some differences in these. Um, they both have six holes. Uh, they're a little smaller on this one, uh, the mobile. Um, inside, there are, are more, if you can see it, I'm trying to give you an angle, more smaller holes on the inside. And on the Delco, there are fewer, bigger holes on the inside. So, as far as flow goes, I think they're both fine. Uh, and uh, let me just take a look at this. Is this a Delco? And it says parts plus oil filter. So that's actually not a Delco. Hmm. I don't know. Whoever did an oil change used that filter. Uh, not sure. I never heard of parts plus. But anyway, we're going to go with a Wix or an AC Delco or a Mobile One. Um, there are some other good ones. k and probably a good one. Uh, any good one. Uh, I would not put any cheapo filter on these. I would put a good one. So there, you can see I've, I've filled that up. I'll put a little bit more in there. Alright, that ought to be good. Always, always wet your gasket with a little oil and the metal part where it's going to touch is going to be all wet anyway also. And make sure you don't get a double gasket on there. Make sure this one comes off with the old one and then you've got one on the new one. I'm just going to reach under there and shove it on. And I'm going to take a rag and wipe down any excess drips. 
Actually, I'm going to use this type of uh, oil filter tool. Uh, I think it's better. The, where I put my jaws in, it was a little bit tight squeeze to use those, so I think this will be better. What I do is I put it up hand tight, and then I give it a half a turn, um, just by looking at the markings on the filter. Give it a half more turn. There's no torque spec on it. Okay, now I am going to use a, a torque wrench for the oil filter. Instead of going like a half turn or three quarters of a turn, it says 22 pound feet and the drain plugs 18 pound feet. And guys and gals, don't use a half inch drive torque wrench that goes up to 150 pounds if you're measuring these little torques. Get a proper 3 eighths drive uh, torque wrench that has a range of like 0 to 75 probably. I'm not exactly sure. But don't, because the big one's not going to measure it that well on these smaller torque specs. Okay, I'm going to do that. Well, this is what you'll have to use on the filter, okay? And my small torque wrench goes from 0 to 80 pounds. Now, the reason I'm paying more attention to these values, and some guys will say, ah, oh, just do them tight enough. They have aluminum oil pans and magnesium oil pans now, not the old steel oil pans so I, I think you need to go with the torque specs now okay okay I want to tell you something special I did not go up to uh, 22 on the filter and I'll tell you why I, I I set it at 22 and I kept turning and it went over one full turn from hand tight and about a turn and a quarter and I said well wait a minute Possibly the gasket on the mobile one is a different gasket than the one that's on what's supposed to be an AC Delco. Remember I told you this is not an AC Delco. Anyway, sometimes you have to use your judgment. And my judgment said that was tight enough. So I didn't tighten it anymore. Uh, so both of the plugs and the filter are, I would say, 20 pounds, 20 pound feet, give or take one or two pound feet. And your wrench is only plus or minus 4% anyway. I don't care if it's a $200 wrench or a $10 torque wrench. It's plus or minus 4%. So we're all tight. We're going to start putting oil in the tank. I'm going to put, I think this calls for 10 and a half. I'm going to put 9, and then I'm going to start measuring. This container here is, is 32 ounces. That's a quart container right there. And... I'd say that filter doesn't even hold maybe a third of a quart. Uh, so I should have <laughs> almost the whole five left here that I'm going to pour in. Now let's get those in. I would definitely not try to free pour it. Use a funnel. I'm going to try and do a little pouring with one hand. Let me show you how I like to open these up. Big hole on the bottom, a little hole on the top so it can breathe. And that seems to work for me pretty well. You can see how that pours? And I wanted you to see what 0W40 looks like coming out of the jug. And it's about 70 degrees ambient here, I would say. The way I'm going to be able to tell when I've got eight in there is I'm going to take these two empties and fill them up with this. So that'll be two, and then two of these jugs, that'll be eight. Now I've got an extra jug. So according to my 2013 owner's manual, the fluid capacity for my 7 liter LS7 engine is 10.5 quarts. So I'm going to believe that. That's what they're telling me. And I've got two out. So if I put two of these in with two out, that's 10 minus 2 is 8. So I'm going to put 8 in to start. I might put 9 in to start. I like the way that balances there, don't you? Anyway, I decided I'm going to put 9 in there, and then I'm going to drive it, get the oil warmed up, and then I'm going to check it according to the factory spec on how to check it. I've got that in another video. 
um, which you can look up on my Corvette playlist. Okay, so that's 10 quarts there, minus two I took out, so that's eight in the car. I'm going to put one more in and then drive it. Uh, there's my startup with this new oil. It went right up to 70 at idle, and now it's about 66 or 67 at idle. Let's go drive it. Uh, first, I'm going to look underneath for leaks. Always do that. Yeah, all looks good under here. Drop it down and drive it. So now we're up to a good operating temperature, 196, and we're idle at about 30 psi. And when I was out revving it, it was maybe about 70 at 3,000 RPM, maybe 2,800 RPM. So the oil pressure all looks good. Uh, I'm going to let it sit for about 10 minutes and then check the oil. They say 5 minutes to 20 minutes. I'll go 10. Okay, so while we're waiting for our 10 minutes, we're going to uh, pour this oil back into the containers uh, that the new oil came out of so we can properly dispose of it. Please do that. And we're going to see if we got 10 quarts out of there or what. The car was always, it appeared to me, overfilled since I got the car, and I've had it for you know eight or nine months, I guess. Um, but there was never any issue with it being overfilled. Overfilled according to the dipstick, I should say. Uh, so I, I am curious to see what's gonna, what I'm going to get coming out. So let's see. So pretty much 10 quarts uh, came out. And you got to figure, and that includes the filter. I drained the filter into this container. Um, and I figured there was probably a half a quart almost of residual in lines and whatever. So uh, there's some lines that go to the oil cooler. And I don't think you end up draining the oil cooler when you change the oil. So uh, it was, if it was overfilled, it was not overfilled very much. Uh, maybe it had ten and three quarter quarts or something like that. So that's good. Okay. So I'm going to have to tell you where it is. I don't know if it will show up on the camera or not. But the oil level is right to there. And it's supposed to be, this is the middle, it's supposed to be in between here and here is okay. And, you know, the geniuses at GM, they don't put down on the dipstick whether this is a quart or not in between the two holes. I'm assuming it is, but some some genius should have, could have made this be two quarts or a half a quart. I don't know. How do you know? Because it's, it's in this tank here. It's measuring the oil level in a tank. But, so what I'm going to say is, if this is a quart from there to there, if I add one quart, it'll bring it up to there. So that's what I'm going to do. And then if that's where it reads, I'll add one more quart and put it in the middle. And if I track it, I'll add another quart and put it up to there. Okay? Well, I'm not going to be able to show you this because I have to, I, I, assuming I'll have to drive it again. Actually, let's do this for fun. Let's add the quart without driving it. Um, I think that might be legitimate. So we are now at exactly 10 quarts, including the filter and so on and so forth. Um, two full 5 quart jugs that I have added in. And I think this is legitimate to check the oil level now because the weight. The wait 15 minutes has already happened, and we're just measuring what's in the tank now. Right? Follow me. So I think we're okay. So I am going to let that drip for about a minute, and then I'm going to measure it again. So, okay, very interesting. Uh, we are within the 20-minute window. We're, we're at 20 right now. And I just stuck the dipstick again, and it's right here. So my theory that this would be one quart is true. And that's 10 quarts right there. And it calls for 10 and a half, including the filter. So 10 and a half, including the filter, is going to put it right about there. I might do 10 and a half, or I might do 11. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm going to wrap it right now because uh, I spent uh, the better part of three or four hours here doing this video on an oil change on the. Uh, LS7 motor. This is the late model LS7 motor which has the higher capacity oil tank. 
So I hope you enjoyed it, learned something, got something out of it. Anyway, give me a thumbs up or a like if this helps you out. Subscribe to my channel if you want more from Froggy. I'll be doing more fluids on this car, actually. I think I'm going to do the tranny or maybe the power steering fluid next. Not sure. Anyway, be safe. Have fun. Froggy out. Bye-bye. What I'm going to do, just for the curious, is I'm going to take my third jug and fill these two up. So I'll take two quarts out of this five and then use these to play around with that level there. Uh, so when you're doing an oil change, I'd get three of these if it was me, rather than pay the extra price of buying them a quart at a time. But that's up to you. Your call. Bye-bye. One more little bit because it's interesting. I put another half quart in... So my grand total is ten and a half, including the filter, and with the cool down thing between five minutes and now it's about thirty minutes, but I've already tested that before. Thirty minutes is still okay to measure it. And I got right to there. So the last half a quart went from there to there. So I don't think this thing is quite linear. From here to here was a quart, from here to here was a half quart. So, just want to pass that along to you guys and gals. I'm going to call it good right there unless I go to a track. Well, this is about the best I'm going to do, sorry, but I don't want to start the car up and, and move it around right now. So, I forgot to tell you how to reset the uh, oil life indicator. So, press the start one time. Press the, let's see, is it fuel? No, it's not fuel. Gauges? No. Trip. There it is. Okay, press the trip button until oil life remaining comes up. Hold down reset. One, two, three, and there you go. You have just reset your oil life because you put new oil in the car. Okay. Sorry, I forgot to put that on the end. So there you go. Be safe. Have fun. Froggy out.